All right, let's start actual building. I'm gonna move through this really quick. I'm gonna grab my tap, get some oil on there. I'm gonna tap the upper hole. If you don't know how to use a tap, uh, look up some tutorials. This is actually a really easy tapping job because the hole size isn't perfect. Um, it's a little too loose, but we're gonna RTV in place anyways. By the way, don't tap other holes like that because that's not the right way to tap a hole. You're supposed to do somewhere around like a quarter turn or an eighth turn and then back up and do those steps. But like I said, this hole is oversized, so it's gonna be just fine. All right, I'm gonna go degraze the block and give it a little rinse and I'll come back. All right, I blew the holes dry. So I'm gonna take my RTV. Just wiping off some excess. sensor hole. Here's a cool trick I just learned the other day. What you can do is you can actually run uh, a pulse fitting over here um, at the top of the block. It's a really good place for a pulse fitting. All right, 5 sixteenths bolt or machine screw rather. Gonna get RTV around the, um, the flanged sort of head. Kind of scooping it up. And I actually don't, oh no, I do have a 5 sixteenths. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna get some Loctite on the threads. What the hell? I have never seen. Oh my God. Look at that. It's like a glue stick, it pushes the Loctite. This is amazing. This is so good. I don't know why I just sniffed it, but. Wow, dude. That is a good idea because other types of Loctite, uh, I always waste a whole bunch of it because it doesn't work. So I just got sealant and Loctite through the hole. Snap this one up real tight. All right, call that good. All right, the block is ready for the most part for assembly. Um, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna check a couple of clearances. I wanted to see if my old lifters are have too much play in them. No, they're fitting really well, so that's good. Well, that one is. Let me try that one. That one has a little bit of play. Not excessive. I actually would like some play over just brand new ones. Okay, that works for me. Um, uh, there is one important thing to mention. I'm going to move this out of the way. And that is, anytime you get an aftermarket cam, uh, there's a really high likelihood of running into clearance issues with the crank. So these cranks are uh, clearanced for the stock cam and not aftermarket. And so the first time, um, where the hell is the hole? Oh, there it is. 
So the first time I put this engine together, I actually had interference issues with this cam. And more aggressive cams actually have this much more. And so what you gotta do is you actually gotta put them both in the engine and then check for clearances. Oh yeah, that's not gonna clear. So right now, immediately. So when you put these together, there's a dot on the, on the um, cam. There's a dot on the crank. And if you line them up, you mesh the teeth in where the dots meet. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, but uh, I'm just rolling around and I'm already right here interfering on this guy right here. So it's absolutely for obvious reasons crucial that all the engine parts get clearanced. I'm going to just roll it around. By the way, you've got to do this in the case too, not just, uh, you know, in my hand the way I am right, right now. But I kind of know how they come together and have a little bit of experience doing this, so I'm gonna. Oh, that, that other lobe just barely clears. Yeah, so I'm definitely gonna run into clearance issues. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take actually my valve cover for now. That's the wrong side. Not valve cover, I'm sorry. Um, Crank cover, where's my dot? Okay, so my dot is there. Nailed it. Okay. So just to visualize it. So, I don't know if you can see, but right there, the cam lobe is coming and in, interfering with the crank. So that's an easy part. I'm just going to go to the belt sander and take this ridge off that's in the factory casting. That lobe touches too, the upper lobe. So if I didn't take care of that, what would happen is uh, I would fire up the engine and something would break. All right, so I'm gonna go grind it away until everything fits together. See you in a bit. All right, so I've been back and forth with the belt sander a few times. You can do it with a Dremel or if you're fortunate enough to have an air compressor. Uh, with a die grinder, that's always good. And I'm clearing. Uh, yep. Now one thing to keep in mind is that uh, this is a four stroke, so you, you gotta check it for two full crank rotations because the cam lobes show up at different parts. Uh, that lower one is still just a little bit closer than I like. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it in the engine and then give it a test. But before I do that, <clears throat> next step is gonna be putting the hardware under the engine block. Uh, I'm gonna install all the studs in this video. Start putting a couple other things on, I think. So Loctite is an absolute must, and I mean, I think this is pretty self-explanatory here. I've had so many critiques and negative comments about my birds making noise in the background. You guys are assholes. <laughs> I love my birds, man. Uh, so that one doesn't want to go in. So what the way I do this is, Put a nut down with the flange. I have these flange nuts for the head. Uh, put the flange up. Actually, this one's not gonna need another one. But what I would do is I would thread another nut on and I would actually tighten them against one another. And what that allows me to do is use another tool. Down. 
so that nut is actually moving on. So I'm gonna thread another knot, nut on. I need number 13. Metric socket. So I'm gonna hold it with the adjustable. Oh, you know what? I forgot that particular one is supposed to be a different length. Then, now I can just loosen the upper nut to come back off, and then I can take this nut off. All right, so that's done. Now, same thing goes for the head studs. So here's a fun fact. Oh, you're welcome, Pete. Uh, you can actually use a hemi head on a non-hemi predator or vice versa. You can use a flat head on a predator or on a, a hemi predator. Um, you can even use GX style or Honda GX style heads. There is one exception. Um, so on the predator, we got these little alignment pins that go in. And so I think it's the bottom two that get those. Um, one of mine's upstairs. But uh, so the head has a hole that's the same size as that. Uh, but you can actually put the head on, especially if you have the studs, the head studs. You can put the head on without the pins and everything lines up. And um, uh, I mean, there's a slight risk of the head shifting or whatever. Um, but in all reality, uh, I don't think these do much any you know, much, much of anything anyways. Um, let's check out the gasket. Yep. Happy with that. Yep. All right. I think the block is ready for clearancing and final assembly. So what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to put the crank and the cam in. First thing I'm going to check is front to back play on my uh, crankshaft, which I have none because I machined the, uh, the front plate to not have any. I'm just going to put a couple of these on for now. Doesn't need to be tight just so it hangs in place. Alright, so I'm going to carefully rotate. I'm going to feel for interference with the cam. Did 
That certainly sounded like a hit. No. So there is a better way to do this, and um, I'm probably just going to go sand a little bit more off just to be safe. Uh, but uh, the way to do it is you actually coat the crank in something like a layout compound, which is that blue, I guess it'd be like a blue lacquer almost. Um, that way when the cam does interfere, you can tell exactly where it hit. I actually think we're fine. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, one thing I noticed, there's a little bit of play in my machine part, and I think that's just for me cutting it a little bit larger to be safe. Um, so when I when I designed this, uh, I actually mimicked the factory valve cover, but I did make it a lot beefier everywhere. So I you know I have the same oil gully here where the oil will splash up from the top and lubricate the cam, and I didn't see any excessive wear on the hole. So I think it's just uh, my poor choice of a machining diameter. So I think we're going to be fine. There's less play, by the way, than in the factory casting, so I'm happy with it. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to go grind off a little bit, and we'll start, um, I guess we'll start assembly phase.